welcome back to the channel guys uh, today we got a good video here uh, I finally got a new turbo for the truck and a brand new one not just a uh, rebuilt HX 35 which is what I'm running right now uh, to get me by until this new turbo came in uh, today we're going to work on getting everything taken off I'm gonna go ahead and take the turbo off get all the uh, intake manifold side taken off valve covers because I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean everything up paint it and uh, just all in all make it all look nice again but anyways yeah let's uh get into it here so here is the new turbo if some of you don't know this is a borg warner k27 and if i don't don't mind me saying it is a really really nice turbo it's waste it comes preset waste gated at 26 pounds which we're going to bump that up to 35 and then uh it's a 60 millimeter inducer and I think it's like a 68 on the turbine side. I'm not really sure, uh, but it should be a good turbo. It's supposed to be a direct replacement for an HX35, but I've already found that the V-band back here is an extra inch and a quarter longer than a stock HX35. So I'm gonna have to do some modifying to the hot pipe, but that's no big deal. We can get it taken care of. And then here I have a three-piece exhaust manifold for a 12 valve. It has these square ports on it. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be replacing the stock Manny. And then gonna be putting this on top of the old HX55. So this should make for a way better running truck than I already had. But either way, it's gonna be awesome. And uh, I can't wait to get started. Now the old turbo, the HX35 that came off, that we actually, that actually blew up is, actually blew up is, actually blew up is look at that i just dropped it here is the old turbo as you can see it has a lot of play in it. the bearings were completely shot just throwing oil everywhere the uh, turbine wheel was rubbing and the compressor wheel was rubbing it's possible that it's rebuildable with a new set of bearings and new shaft and new uh, wheels on front and back but uh, i just was not going to spend the money to rebuild it and then uh, have it fail on me again so we're just going to go here and uh, see how this goes anyways i'm going to get to uh, getting everything taken off and uh, let's get this project started all right for the past week i've been running on this hx35 which is one a buddy of mine gave me. It came off of a uh, 24 valve and it's doing just fine. But because I ran the truck all the way from Decatur with uh, the blown turbo, the EGTs got really hot and cracked the factory manifold. So when I put this turbo on there, uh, it works, but there's a really bad exhaust leak and well, it's just really annoying and doesn't run as good as it should. So what I'm gonna do is this coming off, that turbo is coming off obviously taking off the twin feed and all of the intercooler piping. And then I'm gonna get this painted, the bottom plate painted. I'm gonna redo all the valve covers with better paint. I'm gonna go ahead and paint all these and clean up these ugly welds. And then this here is gonna be painted. And then I'm also going to paint the uh, intake box finally. And then after that, everything should look really nice and it should be dang near finished other than just a little few wiring things but other than that it'll be pretty good to go and got it so that bolt there gave me all sorts of hell. I had to get the grinder out and grind that puppy off, but we got this one off and come to find out this one was pushing oil out right there. So that means this turbo has got some bad seals in it too, but good bearings, but still needs to be rebuilt. So good thing we're changing this out anyways. But as you can see, this compound setup has the flange welded to the hot pipe for the HX35. So I'm gonna have to cut that flange off and then weld on a 
it's it's like a two and a half inch v-band to bolt onto the back of the k27 it's which is the factory v-band on an hx35 i just for some reason felt like doing that instead of using a v-band so that's my problem there but uh you know you live and you learn so there's that here is got the intake side off over here so that's good it was full of oil unfortunately so let's get the let me show you all that because i know a bunch of y'all are interested in this so that is the twin feed v-banded there flange there flange there and then this here is the flange for my fuel filter housing so it's an aftermarket one that has a two micron filter on it it just threads into that hole right there and mounts to the back of it and uh yeah just like that and i built this almost 10 years ago now and it made 850 horsepower on the previous 12 valve it was on and now it's on this one it's a little rough some of the welds are a little rough but they don't leak uh, it was the first time i ever tig welded and uh it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. But yeah, there's that. And then, uh, so here you can see it feeds the number two cylinder. And then back there, the number five cylinder, which is the very back of the plate. So you get 100% even distribution between the front three and the back three. Now, like the Banks twin ram puts you in right here between two and three. And between four and five it's actually right there at four so you still don't get a hundred percent even distribution so that's why i built the one i have now but uh, we're going to get this plate taken off too and then i'm going to have this i'm going to take to a machine shop and have them deck this to make sure it's completely flat because i think one issue i had is this side of the flange is just like a 16th higher so when i bolt it down I'd have to put a lot of silicone in there and over time it started to leak i guess but i'm going to go back once i get it decked with the factory uh grid heater gaskets and then i'm going to go back with a common rail gasket here because it's actually rubber and is has the steel inlay in it so it'll make it a lot better now it has the paper in there and well it didn't hold and it has a pretty good boost leak right there so guys, it's the next day. I got that plate all completely removed. Got the turbo and manifold all out. And uh, now I'm ready to start uh, reinstalling everything. What I'm gonna have to do is jack up the turbo to get it back at the height it's supposed to be, then reinstall the manifold. And that way I can place just the exhaust housing of the turbo on there to see about uh, how much I need to cut off that hot pipe to get everything to work, to work right. And then, uh, then I'm going to uh, work on getting my intake pipe here redone. I got to replace one of the flanges uh, because it doesn't have an O-ring boss. And I'm going to put an O-ring boss on there. And then this side over here, I'm going to change a few things up on that intercooler pipe. And then it's just going to be all uh, painting everything and making everything look nice again, uh, which includes taking out the box, painting that and those pipes. Uh, but that's all going to be in the next video when we start installing everything. Um, but for now, uh, thanks for watching uh, me taking the turbo down, getting the engine disassembled so we can start putting the new one back together. Anyways, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, guys.